answers questions about his performance about the offense's performance. He has had a rough week on first down starts with a throw and hits Plexico Burris who falls forward for a first down 11 yard gain and Plexico Burris carries it up to the 49 yard line after the catch. Here's Derek Ward who is back in the lineup and starting for Brandon Jacobs. Second down and five for the Giants. Another handoff to Derek Ward. Gets to the edge, cups it upfield, and has a nice gain on second down of 13 yards. A fresh set of downs for the Giants, who are putting together a good opening drive. And I think, you know, like we talked about, you know, with the Chicago Bears and, and them needing to get more out of their running game, the Giants haven't run the ball particularly well here over the last couple of games either. You know, for the year, they've been pretty good. But the last couple of weeks, they failed to even get to 100 yards rushing. And, and when you're unable to do that, that also puts a lot of pressure on your passing game. Second throw from Manning. Unleashes and throws it right into the arms of Erlacher. The last thing that Eli Manning wanted on the first possession today, four picks last week, two passes here today, one completion, one interception. Well, you can see the space, right, that Eli Manning sees. And, you know, it, I don't know if the ball's getting away from him or if he expected Jeremy Shockey to cross Brian Urlacher's face. I mean, it was clear that Shockey set in the hole where the hole was. And there has been a miscommunication. And I got to tell you, going back to last week, it seems that there are a lot of miscommunications. And I don't know if that's all Eli or if it's all on the receivers or what exactly it is. But you're never going to throw the ball effectively when you're not sure what your players around you are going to be doing. Grossman trying to find somewhere to go. And he hits Peterson in stride down the sideline. An impressive throw. Torber forced him out after a 29-yard catch and run from Adrian Peterson making his second NFL start. That was a good job there of Rex Grossman moving around and then Adrian Peterson staying alive. I mean, and this is something that he gives this Chicago offense that a guy like Cedric Benson did not, and that is a better receiving threat. A little hurry-up attack by the Bears, and waiting for it was Fred Robbins in this Giants defense, a loss of two. Second down and 12 over the middle. It's Desmond Clark. He's got a first down for Chicago at the Giants 39. You know, I like what Chicago's doing. They're going into a hurry up offense. A lot of times, you know, you'll go to a no huddle, but there's no urgency at the line. There is some urgency with Rex Grossman. I mean, obviously, it's early in the game. They got all the time in the world, but he is trying to get a fast paced offense going right now. Grossman with a pocket steps up and hits Musin Muhammad for 11. You know, so many times when you're able to get into a no huddle like this and not allow a defense to substitute, really not allow them to make too many defensive calls, then as an offense, you're dictating pace, but you're also dictating what a defense can do against you. Adrian Peterson, not much, picks up two. And for a guy like Adrian Peterson, he's getting a second NFL start into a man because of the respect that these Bears teammates have for Peterson. They are thrilled that he's getting this shot, not because it comes at the expense of Cedric Benson, who's lost and on IR for the rest of the year. But they love this guy, and he's finally getting a chance to start. Blitz, complete, Clark, first down. Grossman really seeing it well here on the first possession for the Bears. He really is. I know that was a big win last week. He struggled through a big part of that game, but then at the end, especially in overtime, he made the plays that he had to make to give his team a chance to win a football game against the Broncos, and it's carried over here today. Peterson carries it. Big haul. Down to the six. It depends on the spot, whether it's first and goal or second and less than one. You talk about Adrian Peterson. I mean, obviously not the talent of a Cedric Benson, but like you said, Joe, to a man, they were awfully excited about his opportunity. Peterson first down. 
to the two. And I don't think there's any doubt that the Bears coming out in a no huddle, a fast paced offensive attack has caught this Giants defense on its heels. Yeah, and Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, has done a great job because they're still giving the plays to Rex Grossman in his ear through the communication device between coach and quarterback. And they've done a good job of mixing it up. I mean, it hasn't just been run, it hasn't just been passed. They've pretty much been balanced with what they've done. Now they huddled before this play here down on the goal line. Play action from Grossman over the middle. Touchdown, Clark. Brown Turner and, and, and myself, we talked about uh, a package of plays and, and, um, and then let me call the plays on the line. And if he sees something, then, you know, he'll call it in the head and in, in my headset. And uh, I'll call the play at the line. They came out with a no huddle, that first drive, which was tough because you were out there and you were trying to read runner pass and you could tell it was a pass but you couldn't believe it was a pass because they just passed before and this team you thought was going to run the ball so he, they kind of kept this we were a little unsettled and now Eli Manning with all of his issues has to try and guide this Giants attack while they play from behind almost right out of the gate and a two yard carry brought down by Erlacher is Ward and now we'll see how Eli gets along it is hard for the average fan to believe or understand how Eli Manning, with a combination of Shockey, Toomer, and Burris, guys that he's basically been with since the start of his career with the Giants, can't be on the same page at this point. Well, and a lot of that I know, you know, relative to Plexico Burris, when I mean, he hasn't practiced all season long. Here's Ward again, left side, and he is brought down immediately. Anderson over there, Agunlier in on the stop, a gain of only one, third down coming up. Eli airs it out. Penalty flag is thrown. There was some contact. Sonoris Moss downfield. He was working against Tremaine McBride, and we'll see if this is indeed against Chicago. Looks like it. Holding 26 defense. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. First down, just a five yard penalty on the defensive hold, and Ward carries it left side. McGowan on the stop. Third down and five, and a handoff is to Ward. And Ward is brought down a yard and a half shy of a first down. A gain of only three. Briggs made the stop, and a punt is coming. Bears are two and one in his previous three, and he hits Bradley, who's wrestled out of bounds to 25. And I know Mark Bradley is a guy, Troy, you were wondering about. I think Rex is as well he wants to see Bradley on the field more yeah, I was just thinking about it when I was watching the game last week that here Mark Bradley was a guy who was drafted in the second round a couple of years ago and, and was coming along and then he's had a number of injuries the last couple of years but last year going into the playoffs he was a big part of what they were doing because he gives them such a big play threat but they haven't used him much this year they want to use him a lot more here in this game today Peterson carries left side and he is brought down short of a first down Peterson lunges for a first down, and that was all Adrian Peterson. A gain of two and a fresh set of downs for Chicago. On first down, pressure on Grossman, who completes. Out just shy of the 35-yard line, Bernard Berry in a gain of five. And I know, Troy, I know you well enough to know that when you say that, Part of you is thinking about the Giants. I mean, you'd like to see the Giants, I know, pick it up a little bit with their pace and get up to the line offensively and get something going. Because we have seen Eli Manning play well when they have gone no huddle. Well, we have. And, and I think that they're, you know, whatever needs to be done for the Giants in order to create some urgency, you know, I definitely think that has to happen because they definitely seem to lack that when you watch them. Peterson on a draw. Lowers his head and pulls forward for a first down. A gain of six. McCorders was in on the stop, but he was along for the ride for a short while, too. Grossman wide open is Berrien, and he is brought down immediately by Madison. The 
ball in the hands of Devin Hester for the first time today and he is brought down by Michael Johnson after a gain of only one. Well that's now one of the ways that they're going to try to get the ball into Devin Hester's hands and you know in talking with Ron Turner and Lovey Smith and you say gosh I mean here you got a guy who, who who's done what he's done and had the game he had last week against the Broncos. I mean I can only imagine the things that are being discussed in these offensive staff meetings about how do we get the ball into Devin Hester's hands. I thought Ron Turner made a good point. We'll put him at 12 yards direct snap it to him and treat it like a punt return. <laughs> he didn't really laugh when he said it. Third no, and five. They were serious. Grossman in trouble throws it away. Chased on the play by Big Fred Robbins in OCU Manura. On first down, Amani Toomer on the catch. And Amani falls forward for a first down. And off to Ward, and Derek Ward crosses the 35 and is out near the 37, picked up eight, and he makes it a more manageable third down for this Giants offense. Third down and seven. Quick setup and throw, and it is complete to Amani Toomer. It depends on the spot. And I mean, it is right on the line. It's an unofficial line. Tom Coughlin doesn't like the spot at all. And we'll get a measurement. Neither coach liked the spot of the football. And I mean, you can see why it was placed where it was placed. I think it's a pretty good spot. It just depends on if it's enough or not. Yep, it's going to be close. And from that angle, it's hard to tell if, in fact, he was able to get across the yellow line. And apparently he did. A blitz from the Bears and a reverse to Hickson, who is wrestled down by Alex Brown. A loss of eight. Well, the, the Chicago Bears go to an eight-man front, and you're going to see Alex Brown. He just plays this beautifully. He gets up the field. He does not chase it. He reads the reverse coming back his way. He holds his ground, and then he's able to make the play. I mean, that's textbook right there on how you contain on the back side. You know, so many of these teams, they want to run that reverse around the back if you over pursue. Chicago got gagged last week against Denver on some misdirection stuff. I guarantee you that's something they spent a lot of time working on this past week. Third down and 18. Underneath, playing it conservatively, it's Ward. Well short of a first down. And so, if you listen real carefully, you can hear Giants fans all the way from New York saying, come on. They fake a reverse and hand to Peterson right up the gut. And Adrian picks up four. Cofield on the stop. Second and six. Down the field. Devin Hester behind the defense drops it. Oh, man. This time they split Devin Hester out to the offensive right side, and they run a corner blitz, so now he's on a safety. And all of a sudden, he just runs right by him. I mean, you got... I don't, it's interesting concept. I don't, you know, they don't know that Devin Hester's going to be out there, but they, they split Hester out, and they run a corner blitz. Now, all of a sudden, you got a guy of Hester's ability running the route on a safety, and, but they're unable to capitalize on it because Hester doesn't make the catch. A blitz from the Giants, and Grossman is wrapped up. Is it a safety or not? They're going to say he was corralled at the one, no safety. But great pressure by Madison off a corner blitz. Well, we've seen it now twice. We saw it on the previous play. They bring pressure again, you know, off the edge. And they're trying to get John Tate, the left tackle, out to him. And then Rex Grossman sees that it's coming. And rather than go down, he, he tucks and almost winds up with a safety. So now snapping from the one is Patrick Manley, the long snapper for the Bears and Maynard from the back of the end zone. And that 
was hit funny or somebody got a hand on it and the ball will stop rolling near the 32. The quarters trying to get in there at the end they ran him out there. There was pressure by David Tyree who is a Pro Bowl special teams player. Did he get a hand on it. I think so a hand a helmet a shoulder pad whatever it was and because of it just a 31 yard punt. This could be a big swing in the game. Think about the drop by Hester which would have been his second 81 yard touchdown catch and run of the year. Then the sack by Madison and now this from Derek Ward after the short punt Ward still on his feet and down inside the five. They're going to mark him at the one. It's first and goal. It, it works as well as what it's supposed to. And too many times we see things like what we just saw. So now it's drones and he's brought down and loses two. So Tom Coughlin got the explanation while we were in break. And one of the officials said well we saw him throw the flag but by our estimation the flag hadn't even hit the ground and the ball had been snapped. And because they awarded the challenge it took a touchdown off the board and now with the Chicago defense they have a chance to keep the Giants out of the end zone as Mark Anderson made that last play. Second and goal. Again drones doesn't get there. Going nowhere and Lance Briggs was in the middle of it. For Chicago it's third and goal. Handoff is to Ward and justice is served as Ward gets in for the touchdown on third and goal. Tie game starting from their own 31 and Derek Ward with a leap a gallop and out of bounds near the 35 of Chicago. 33 yard run Tillman forced him out and another impressive carry by Derek Ward. Yeah right off this left side you know with Seibert and Deal and getting the push and then Ward being able to get inside of those blocks and then back to the outside and and Burris doing a doing a good enough job anyway on on Tillman in in the secondary so that Ward could then get up the sideline but I'll tell you Ward is having himself a heck of a first half. Already over 100 yards on the day. Manning steps up and hits Amani Toomer. First down, Giants. 12 yard completion. That ball just slips out of the hand of Eli Manning. They're calling it a fumble, and Chicago takes over. Anthony Adams on the recovery for Chicago and let's take a look. Well, yep, open hand. I mean they call that the open hand and if the arm is going forward and the hand is empty then it's a fumble and as you could tell the ball comes out as soon as he brings his arm back to make the throw. We're trying to get the ball out quick just had a little wet spot on it and just, uh, you know, just slipped out right on my hand. Second Giants turnover of the day a Manning interception now this fumble. It's big news for a Bears team that hasn't been getting takeaways like they did a year ago but that was a gift and now Adrian Peterson carries it for three yards on first down after the Bears take over second and seven more of a hurry up attack by Chicago just like they opened the game and this is Olsen on the catch Mitchell on the stop a gain of three third down coming up and the Bears just go right to the line of scrimmage. They go right to the line of scrimmage and, and I think that for the Giants defensively I mean this is when if you're a good defense you get the ball right back to your offense. Manning throws down the sideline Grossman does and it's caught by Berrien. Madison on the tackle what a throw by Rex Grossman. And Bernard Berrien there on the other end 50 yards to take the ball to the Giants 15. I'm trying to figure out how Bernard Berry and even made the catch. It was good coverage by Sam Madison. I mean, you're going to see where the ball is positioned. I mean, that's pretty good coverage right there by Sam Madison, and yet Bernard Berry and able to make the play. And again, the Bears get right to the line of scrimmage. Grossman steps up, dumps it off. Adrian Peterson makes a move down to the five. 
Back it, to the Bernard Berrien catch. This was one-handed, wasn't it? it? It looked like it sure was. And and he used his right arm to shield Madison just enough, got away with it, and then made the one-handed catch. And we saw that from Santana Moss a couple weeks ago there with the Redskins. It's a great play. Bernard Berrien, who also had a great game in last week's win over Denver. First and goal from the five, and Peterson's going to lose a yard. Kavika Mitchell came in to make the play. It's second and goal. It's, it's amazing how quickly momentum changes. I mean, the Giants had had the momentum, moving the football, all of a sudden a fumble, and then on third down, the Giants unable to get off the field, give up the big play, and now here the Bears are looking at they're going to be able to take the lead on this possession. The officials trying to do all they can to keep these two sides from getting into a fight. Well, and you got you got Rex trying, you know, guys, they're playing at such a fast pace that some of the guys don't know when they're going to the line or when they need to get huddled. Rex getting them back in the huddle right before this play. Play clock at two as Grossman got the snap and throws it away. Olsen was close enough to it and the ball very close to Dockery defending for the Giants. It's third goal. Little pump from Grossman. He's in trouble and down he goes. Michael Strahan again. And here is Peterson over the right side and out to the 15 yard line. Play action. Second and five and the pass to Musin Muhammad. Hit from behind and dropped at the 35 yard line. Third down and nine for Chicago and the pass to Rasheed Davis. Complete first down at the Chicago 49. Well and as I expected now Chicago's going into their no huddle. I mean had they not have been able to do anything there they'd have been content just punt the ball. But the Giants call the timeout Chicago gets the first down and here they go. Grossman looking for somewhere to go and he drops it to Peterson about even with Grossman when he let it fly a seven yard gain doll on the stop for the Giants and it's second right, down and short with over a minute to play second and three. Pass complete to Davis first down Chicago. And he lunges inside the 40 to the 38 and the Bears will use one of their two remaining timeouts Grossman didn't want to but Desmond yeah. Clark called it. <laughs> Underneath Peterson behind the defense still going down inside the 15. <laughs> On this drive. Grossman in trouble and human era brings him down. That's the second time that has happened this half. Starting at the 20. And Derek Ward lost the football. Chicago has it. Agunle comes away with the football. He's had a forced fumble in three straight games, and we'll get a look at the replay and see who exactly knocked it out. Yeah, we weren't able to see exactly who it was that was able to strip Ward with the ball. May have been a Gunlier. If so, that's his fourth straight game with a forced fumble and three turnovers. See if it's number 93. He's coming in on the back side if, in fact, it was him, and it, and it sure was. He got in there with the right arm as he was making the tackle. And as you said, Joe, he's had one in each of the last four games now. And, you know, he's playing now at the level that they had hoped that he would when he joined the team a few years ago. He's getting pressure on the quarterback, having, you know, really his best season in a Bears uniform. Picked him up from Miami, Chicago did, as Peterson gets it and doesn't do much with it. Picks up one. Peterson. Broken. About a yard shy of a first down. 
Here is Peterson. There is a first down, Chicago. Peterson gets a couple. The Bears are, are doing defensively here today and winning this game defensively the way they rode to the Super Bowl last year under Lovey Smith. And while last week wasn't pretty in the overall numbers, Lovey Smith thought his defense played actually well. They gave up some big plays, no doubt. But on a play by play basis, he feels like they're starting to, to figure things out. And I agree with him because you watch them. I mean, they've always played hard. And last week, watching that game, they played exceptionally hard. You know, they just haven't gotten some of the breaks that maybe they had gotten in previous years. Some of the injuries obviously have affected them. But today, they put it together and they're playing very well. Second down and eight, Peterson. Short of a first down by a couple, and now flag comes in at the end of the play. After the play was over and the whistles had blown. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 60 on the offense, need the player while he was down. That's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be third down. Boy, that is a killer penalty instead of a manageable third down and marches the ball all the way back to the 23. Well, he's right at the end here. You're going to see him right here. See what happens. Sure enough, I mean, pretty easy. You got officials all around him, and it's Kavika Mitchell is who he is who he needs there at the end. So that was enough to get a 15-yard flag, and now it's third down and 19. Grossman in trouble and can't connect with Peterson. So for the third time in this game, the Bears have been moving it. They've been down inside the red zone. And this time, instead of a sack, it's a penalty on Metcalf that marches the ball back, and Chicago has to settle for a field goal try. Here's another fumble. Trying to get it to Ward. Agunlie was in there on that play again for Chicago, and it stays with the Giants. That was almost crushing. Erlacher comes out of there with a football, but they have already motioned that it belongs to the Giants. Erlacher's behind everybody with a ball. Second down and 10. They do go back to Ward. Ward pushes the pile. They go underneath to the other tight end, and the pass is caught by Kevin Boss. His first catch of the day and a four-yard gain for a first down. You know, when you really look at this Giants offense, Joe, and you and you say, you know, who is a defense? Who do you really have to concern yourself with? I mean, there's there's nobody really that threatens you. I mean, usually when you look at any offensive unit, you say, man, we've got to do something about this guy. You know, in New England, that's Randy Moss. In Dallas, that's Terrell Owens. Or, you know, you can go across the board. But with the Giants, who is that guy? Plexico Burris, he can't run like he used to. Jeremy Shockey, he's not a deep threat that's going to hurt anybody. And so the whole defense starts playing a lot closer to the line of scrimmage, and everything becomes harder. Here's Ward. Out to the 40. Sonoris Moss at the bottom of the picture. Fake handoff penalty flag on the play. And underneath, it's Ward getting it into Chicago territory. But a flag is down. And it's an offside against Chicago, so the play will stand. Offside, 97, defense. That penalty declined. Play results in a first down. A nice gain on that underneath throw to Derek Ward. Yeah, and then when you're able to get big chunks like that, regardless of how it comes about, whether it's underneath to a back and everybody's run off or outside to a wide receiver, I mean, those are the types of plays that ultimately lead to points, whether that's field goals or touchdowns. It is very hard in the National Football League to sustain drives without getting big chunks at some point in a possession. Toss to Bradshaw, tripped up. Lance Briggs in on the tackle, and he had help. Derek Ward takes a seat at the 35. Gain of only one. Erlacher in there to make the play. 
Handoff is to Ruben Drones, and he falls forward. It depends on the spot. He could be inches short, and a decision would be coming for the Giants, and I would imagine they'll try and pound it if they don't have enough. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a decision really to be made. I mean, where the ball's at right now on the field, I, I think you're definitely going for it here on fourth down. Hand off. Drones gets to the edge. Plenty. Dumped at the 25-yard line, Danielle Manning on the stop, but once Ruben Drones got it outside, an easy first down and a conversion on fourth down for New York. Yeah, and you look at the outside, what you're going to see is Kevin Boss right here does a heck of a job. Actually, it's Madison Hedgecock, I'm sorry, but he does a heck of a job by securing the edge which then allows Ruben Drones to get outside because initially that's not where Drones was going to go. He wanted to go inside of that block, but because Hedgecock was able to stay on his block, he was able to secure the edge for Drones. Play action. Shockey. First down inside the 10. They mark Shockey at the 7, and other than that little drop-off pass to Jeremy, that's his first catch down the field. Yeah, this is pretty good here. They had a chance in the seam there to, to Jeremy Shockey, and if they're able to get it to him and allow him to keep his feet, you know, there's a chance that he's then able to run that ball into the end zone. 18-yard completion, the longest completion of the day for Eli Manning, first and goal. Ward to the five. Erlacher on the tackle, second and goal. They try Ward left side, trying to get to the edge. Not going to make it. Is that Awali Agunlie was out there to make the stop, and he had teammates with him. It's third and goal with under a minute to play here in the third quarter. And again, it's Madison Hedgecock. Watch him at fullback. You just don't see a lot of true fullbacks in the league anymore, but you know you can tell that Ward likes getting in behind him, and for a tailback to be able to get behind a fullback that they believe is going to make the block, I mean, that gives that guy a great deal of confidence in running the football. Hedgecock's been able to secure quite a few blocks on this possession. Third and goal. Play action. Manning avoids a sack for Burris. Picked off Tillman. They're blowing the play dead as Tillman goes down the field. It's a touchback. But no points as Manning throws another pick. So now taking over at their own 20 are the Bears, who still lead by nine. Down the field, it's Desmond Clark. Perfect throw. And a big lift for Chicago as the third quarter comes to an end. First play, fourth quarter, and a good play by Reggie Torber as he brings down Jason McKee. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. <laughs> Pressure up front, a screen to Peterson, and what a terrific play by Kavika Mitchell. If Peterson gets away from Mitchell, it has a chance of being a big play. Instead, it's a gain of only one, third down and 16, and the Bears are not in field goal range. As we're out there, and it's 7 to 16, I know you guys are writing your stories already. So a lot of you, you may have to change some words. Some of you may have to rewrite the whole story. But I definitely know, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, they're writing us off already. But it is four quarters, you know, and, and I was thinking, let's win it. God, if we win it, it'll really screw you guys up. his back foot Grossman lets it go and overthrows Bernard Berrien and that is a very impressive job by this Giants defense led by first year coordinator Steve Spagnolo to hold there the five yard penalty certainly didn't help on the false start by Clark and now it's a punt here's the 
Here's one down the middle of the field to Omani Toomer. A good throw from Eli Manning, a completion of 18 yards. Erlacher downfield to make the stop. And here's that hurry up by the Giants. They get to it, they hand to Ward, and Derek Ward adds to his career best total. First down by Ward as he gets it just outside the Chicago 45. And you mentioned, Joe, the interception by Eli in the end zone to, to Charles Tillman. And obviously significant because you, you miss out on an opportunity to at least get a field goal more significant because that would have cut it then to a one possession ball game. Whereas right now at nine points, it's a two possession game. First down Giants. Pass complete. That's Plexico Burris. And it depends on the spot as to whether it's enough for a first down. Erlacher there to make the stop. You know, now you take a look at this and you're going to see basically the same thing we saw earlier where he's got a clean lane and makes a perfect throw. And you got Burris working back to the ball. I mean, those are the types of things that if Burris was able to practice on a daily basis, I think we would see that kind of consistency between those two a lot more. Another flag flies and Manning ripped down by Darwin Walker. But a flag came in at the start of the play. And it looks like the Giants are going to get that five yards Outside, right back. 55, defense, five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Lance Briggs. So now back to the second and one. Here's Ward. And Ward, it looks like, has enough for a first down. McGowan on the tackle. First down, New York, down by nine with under nine to play. Handoff is to Ward. And Derek Ward is doing all he can, picks up eight. And again, to bring up what you were talking about earlier, the injury to Steve Smith, first a scapula, a break, and then a hamstring problem is what has Sonoris Moss on the field. Quick snap, and Ward has another big Giants first down. They almost caught Chicago with too many men on the field, which would have been an easy first down. And now Ward is hurt. And grabbing at his left leg. Well, I know he's had the, the two fumbles today, but you know, he has really run the ball hard, and he's, finished, he's finishing the runs and has done a good job. He just got a first down. That ball's coming loose, too. <laughs> left ankle took a big hit. First down, New York. Ball inside the Chicago 25. Manning down the middle and a big hit. A flag is coming as Shockey was drilled downfield by Brandon McGowan. Well, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of question about that one, was there? I mean, you see Jeremy Shockey, he's going up the seam and. Pass interference, McG 36, <laughs> defense. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. First down. Only problem was the back judge reached for his flag and whiffed. It. Yeah, he couldn't get the flag out of his pocket, and that's why Shockey got up and didn't immediately see the flag and thought that they weren't going to make the call. So it sets up first and goal. Giants need a touchdown. Working this fourth quarter into the wind. Manning steps up and throws incomplete. McBride flashed in front. Tyree, the intended receiver. I tell you what, and Eli's, Eli's fortunate that he threw that ball high. I'm not sure that he saw Trumaine McBride, but it, if he had thrown it to where his guy could have caught it, McBride would have been the one intercepting it. I mean, you're going to see here, trying to throw it into Tyree in the corner, but if he were to get that ball down to where Tyree could have caught it, but McBride has the interception. Second and goal. This is Drones on the handoff to the six. Manning a little pump throws. It is incomplete. Amani Toomer 
says he caught it. The officials say it skipped in, and Amani Toomer was wide open. Yeah, well, it's going to be close, and it's just a matter of, you know, how, if he did catch it, is there enough there to where they're able to change it? Now, let's just see if he caught it, first of all. He's got his hands underneath, and, and I mm. think he did. I, I mean, it looked too. like he had his hands and his arms on the ground, and the ball came in. But is there enough there to where they'll be able to then overturn this call? We're challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. There's no doubt it's skipped, but I think you could make the argument that it's skipped along the arms of Amani Toomer and into his chest. But as you say, is there enough to overturn it? It's being challenged by Tom Coughlin, and we've looked at it as close as we can. Maybe after it hits him in the chest, if it comes back down and hits the grass. Just too tough to tell. Yeah, and it looks, you know what, it looks like it bounced, Joe. Initially, it looked like he had his arms and hands underneath it, but from that angle there, it looked like his arms were separated. The ball bounced in between them. And look at this angle. His hands are underneath the football. Does the ball hit his chest, come up, and hit the grass afterward? It, it's hard I would to say he catches that. Yeah, it's hard to tell there after it comes in as to whether or not the tip of the ball touches the ground between his elbows. After reviewing the play, the receiver had his hands under the ball. It's a completed catch for a touchdown. Here's Peterson. And Adrian Peterson is tripped up by Reggie Torbor in the end, a gain of seven. And Peterson goes nowhere, was hit first by Michael Strahan. Came off the edge, made the play, a loss of one, third down coming up. Strahan's had a nice day. You no, know, he's really, he's had, he's had a nice year. You know, I mean, there's so much conversation I know every year in the offseason, particularly among veterans, about how important training camp is to somebody. And I know he started out a little bit slow, but... If it meant him missing training camp again next year to ensure that he comes back to this team, I think I'd let him go spend the summer out on the West Coast again. Third down and four. Big play. Play action from Grossman, who is sacked again. Six on the day, Justin Tuck. At certain times during the game, I was uh, admiring their uh, the, the defense and their energy and their attitude. They like to play. And uh, you can see that that front really enjoys getting after the quarterback, and I think that that whole attitude permeates through the through the defensive team. The handoff is to Ruben Drones, who's the last veteran running back left standing after the injury to Ward, and they've taken him for X-rays on his ankle. Again, a five by Ruben Drones or Lacker on the tackle. Plenty of time. Three timeouts left, down by two. David Tyree, back in the mix offensively, has a first down out across the 35 to the 36. And Eli Manning, we have seen, even in games when he struggles, can get on a hot streak, which only adds to the frustration when the inconsistency hits. And we'll see how he does here with this chance. Well, Jeremy Shockey, he's having a hard time picking up the play that Eli is calling. To block there, and Drone somehow lost the football and picked it right back up. Bounced right back into his arms in a gain of three. I tell you, he had a good hole in there, too. I mean, look at the lane that Drones has to go, and it's Tommy Harris that, that gets his arm on the ball. It looked like nobody touched it when he first went through at first blush, but Tommy Harris was the one who got it loose. Under three and a half to play. Second down, pass complete. That's Toomer to the 45 yard line. Remember, the Giants are working into the wind, which is a factor. Lawrence Tyne is the place kicker for New York. Well, there's plenty of time. I, 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 would, I would encourage Eli to slow things down a little bit. If he wants to try to milk this thing down and, and make this the last possession for the game. Handoff is to Drones, blocking out in front of him. He is shy of the 40. 
Picked up four and a half. Alex Brown on the tackle for Chicago. You know, it's not surprising to me that Amani Toomer was on the receiving end of that that last pass. It, you know, you can just tell the confidence level that Eli has in him. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where he's looking at on each and every one of these next few passes. Manning looks left, scans the field, comes back to his right. Pass is caught. David Tyree down inside the 20. Handoff is to Drones. Swallowed up immediately by Mark Anderson. No gain. And a timeout taken by Chicago. That's their first. Now they just want to take as much time off the clock as they can. Well within field goal range. They go toward the end zone. And it's caught on a sliding catch by Plexico Burris. And a good throw by Eli Manning. Let's see what the Giants do on first and goal. It's drones, and they just let him walk into the end zone. So there's the good news for the Giants. They take their first lead of the day. If the Giants win this game, one of the keys to the win would be controlling Devin Hester. Here's a screen to Peterson, and what a good play by the rookie Johnson. Michael Johnson came up and tripped up Adrian Peterson, a gain of only one. I'm not so sure Adrian Peterson doesn't score if Michael Johnson doesn't make that play. Pass is complete to Clark. Clock will continue to run. Clark is very close to first down yardage, just shy. So the Bears pick up the first down, and now all of a sudden, with a ball inside the 45, Grossman's going to clock it. Grossman fires for Davis, can't make the catch. Stuck his hands out, could not make the connection. It's third and 15. You know, Sam Madison was underneath, and you're going to see he just takes off and goes... Here's Sam Madison. He goes right at the receiver. Ne never turned to try to even locate the ball. He immediately went right at him. Rasheed Davis and then just took him to the ground. You know, because they do have the one timeout, Joe, they can work the middle of the field. And, you know, usually in these situations, that's where you've got to go. To the sideline for Barry his hands Johnson there defending but Barryan had it in his hands or off him couldn't make the catch and now it's fourth and 15 yeah, and deja vu going back to last week on you know, fourth and long against Denver and Barryan had a chance there to make the play and just off his fingers but last week they faced a similar situation against Denver and they had the illegal contact which kept the drive alive which ultimately allowed them to go in for the tying touchdown they're going to need to make a play here. Fourth and 15. Grossman steps up and hits Muhammad. First down Chicago. And the Bears will spend their final timeout. 17 seconds left. Big completion by Rex Grossman of 20 yards on fourth and 15. Well, that's just a great job. And, and we've seen it from him, as I said. We saw it last week on the throw to Bernard Barron in the end zone to tie the game. And now at fourth and 15, you know, for him to be able to get that ball in there, Muhammad does a nice job of knowing he's going to take a contact after the catch and hanging on to it as well. Blitz from the Giants. Grossman, end zone. Davis out of his reach and out of bounds. 11 seconds left. Eleven seconds to go. End zone again. This one falls incomplete. Four seconds left. And barring a defensive foul, we are down to our final snap. Grossman lets it develop. Fires for the end zone. It's broken up. 
There are no flags, and the Giants have come back to beat the Chicago Bears.